I've got my Adobe XD project open so I can reference the logo, the menu and the content. The first step for me would be to build the HTML and insert the details. I've already created my project file but basically all I have is an index.html page, an images folder where we're gonna store all images and SVGs and then I have a CSS folder and for the CSS as always I like to use SCSS and let's run the watch SAS compiler first which creates the styles.css for us and by the way if you don't know about the life size compiler you can go to extensions and I'm using Visual Studio Code and just install the life size compiler and as always I like to use the live server because every time I make a change on the website and save it will update the browser for me. Let's get going by creating the HTML as always I'm gonna use the emit abbreviation that comes in Visual Studio Code so I can just type HTML let me change the title to write and by the way, if you're familiar with uh, HTML and CSS, of course, you can skip all this. But if you like to learn how to do this from scratch, then just follow along. And the first thing now I'm going to do is open the Explorer from the left side. I need to include my styles.css. And to do this, we can do link CSS and that would be CSS slash styles dot CSS and then the next bit I want to include is the GSAP library which we'll be using for the animation. Just look for GSAP then navigate to the greensock.com slash GSAP website and you can go to documents, navigate to installation and in here we have a few options you can download it, you can use CDN, NPM, GitHub and so on and for this I will be using CDN and if you scroll down they give you the CDN link here so you can literally copy this and include this in your HTML. So let's minimize this, go back to HTML and include the GSAP link at the bottom of the HTML. And we might as well, we're not going to be writing too much JavaScript in here so we might as well just write the scripts in here. So I'm going to open scripts and this is where our, uh, our scripts will go. Okay, let's now focus on building the actual HTML file and let's go to the Adobe XD and see the references. So first of all, I'm going to focus on building the top bit, which will be the header. Then we'll take this information. So let's start building the, the header first. To do this, I will be using HTML5 as you should. I will just create a header element and inside here let me actually zoom in a little bit so you can see better just like this so for the header let's create a div with the class of logo and the logo is actually cool right but because we're using the exact same font as our main font then i can just write it with text instead of downloading um, extracting it as an image or as a vector so let's do this and then we can have then we can have the navigation which I'll wrap in a nav tag and inside the navigation I will have an order, unordered list and let's create some of the items. So we have all products, all company, safety and help. And the last one will have help. Okay, if we save this and let's let's go to the explorer, right click on the index and open with live server and that will open. Every time I refresh now, this will change. And what I can do actually, so we have our logo, we have the menu and now we need to start building the hero text and two buttons. For this I will create a section and I will give this section a class of hero 
you can call it whatever you like and inside this section i will have two main divs one div will be for the left side uh, for the content in here and one div will be for the image area the first div i'm gonna call div class hero content maybe like that and i'm not too fussed about the html i'm just trying to get it done as quick as possible so we can move on to the animation and let's close the div of course inside here we'll have let me actually open this full width because it's a little bit easy to see but we have this as a h we can have this as a h1 tag let's copy the text go back so h1 then we can have this as a paragraph last we can have the two buttons sign up to drive and talk to us as buttons For the buttons, as you can see, they have different styles. So I might as well give them classes right now so we can style them individually. Let's name the first one something like sign up button. And let's name the second one something like talk VTN. That would do for now. If we go back to our page, you will see we have the buttons, the H1, the paragraphs and so on. The next bit would be obviously the illustration. And for this, what I can do is let's create another div with a class of illustration. And then inside here is where we're going to be adding the SVG. Let's skip this for now and start styling things. So it makes a little bit more sense later on and things look a little bit cleaner on the actual page because if I'll add the SVG now, everything is gonna get a little bit messy and hard to see. Now that we've done most of the HTML, we need to focus on the CSS. And if you go to the Explorer, let's open styles.scss and I'm gonna close the Explorer so you can see a little bit better. And again, with the CSS, I'm going to try to get this done as quick as possible and for this uh, for this design I'm using the Monterrat font which you can find on Google Fonts so if you go to Google Fonts and then first link so fonts.google.com and if you look for Montserrat, you can see that this is the font that I will be using. And of course you select the font, then it gives you options to customize which weight you want. And I will be using mainly mainly regular and I believe same both. So if you select both of them, click embed, I can literally do the import. And of course we'll need to include this in our body or whatever. So let's close this and focus on the actual page. Let's start by starting the body. I'm just gonna super quickly reset a few things. As I said, I'm not gonna be focusing on details too much, but let's quickly reset the body. So as always, margin zero. Let's do padding zero. The font family is the one that we just added. Let's reset the line height to be one and I want to reset the I want to add the box sizing to be border box go back to the page you will see that we don't have any margins and everything is looking good let's go back and start styling the header of our page so this is basically our navigation and logo header I'm going to do the position to be fixed, top 0, left 0, right can be 0, and I will put the Z index to be 1 so it's above the other elements on the page, and I will also give my header a padding of 20 pixels so we have that nice white space around there and let's see what we have at the moment so of course the the head is now on top and if i put this to the right side so you can see a little bit better unfortunately it's a little bit hard to see but what i can do now is i can actually do play the header as flex 
and what that would that would basically allow me to display the logo on the left side and the text on the right side let me also reset some of the um, h1 tags so what i can do h1 h2 h3 h4 i probably won't be using all of them so i'm just going to reset those and do margin of zero and padding of zero and we have everything at the top but as you can see it's a little bit hard to see so what i can do is quickly i'm going to start this hero section in here and the reason for this is what i want to do is i want to do some margin at the top of 400 pixels okay so what i wanted to do is i just wanted to get this content away from the header so you, we can see a little bit better or we could have just hidden this but anyways let's continue so this is now a flex box and i think what i can do quickly align this to the left and this to the right what i can do is do flex direction to be set to row save this and let's do justify content and we can do space between i think and if i save this you will see that this just saves us a lot of time of messing around i kind of want to focus on the hero section now just because if i start changing the colors of those elements uh, you won't be able to see them so let's quickly give the hero section of background color and the background color of all design is this We can do height to be 100 VH and just remove the margin top. And this is, this is good. Maybe we can do padding for now top of 400 pixels, just so it gives us that space at the top. Sorry for the confusion. I uh, hope this makes sense because this is fixed. It's kind of like floating on the top and this content goes underneath. Let's continue styling the logo and the navigation super quickly. For the logo, font weight to be set to 600 uh, font sorry excuse me font size will be 2.2 m the color of course is going to be white and i think this is good so far and now we can focus on the navigation and then later on we'll make sure that everything is center aligned and so on so let's focus on the nav and for the nav again we can have the color of white for the for all elements and I'm not gonna be actually putting any links because this is just a demo but of course you have to add hrefs uh, to link every single page and so on and then inside the nav you had we had the unordered list and for the unordered list let's reset some of the margins uh, paddings if there is any obviously we need to reset the list out to be set to none so we don't get the dots then for the list uh, display in line block okay and maybe give um, each element padding of 20 pixels so they're spaced around a little bit better and i think this looks good maybe we just need to move the logo down a little bit logo we can do something like margin top uh, 10 pixels maybe a little bit less um, something like this will do so margin top six looks to be center aligned with the other elements which is good and now we can focus on the hero content which is this part and as you notice we have a little bit of yellow here what i can do is actually i will add if i go back to my html and find get paid and i'm just going to wrap this into a span so we can give it a color of yellow in a second so let's go back to styles that scss and and okay so what we can do in here let's style the h1 and we can either do this globally or we can just do it for this section um let's do it for this yes let's do it for this section for now so it's a little bit more specific uh so we want the font family to be uh, inherited of course and i think you already is anyway maybe we don't need that color will be set to white uh the font font size will be set to 2.6 m's margin 
bottom we can set to 1m so it just pushes the paragraph I think I reset everything on yeah I've reset everything on the h1 h2 h3 and h4 and the p tag so we can just do custom ones the yellow bit the get paid bit and we just added the span which will be the color of yellow and yellow is going to be something like ffd500 then for the paragraph in here which you probably can't see uh, for the paragraph we can do font size to be around 1m which is technically already 1m uh, because 1m is equals the body which is 16 pixels so that's kind of useless but let's go with it uh, the margin bottom can be set to 1m the color, the color needs to be set to white. Maybe we can do margin button of 2M because yeah, that looks a lot better. And let's now style the buttons. I'm gonna style them inside the hero section, but of course you can do them globally for your whole website, which is probably the correct way of doing it. In fact, let's do the button as, uh, let's do the buttons to be everywhere. So as, let's do buttons here. So they are, so we can access this everywhere. So button. Give it a little bit of padding of 20 pixels to the left and right and maybe top and bottom can be 10. We need to reset any margins that we probably don't have so let's remove that. Font family let's inherit this and as you saw this worked uh, so it's inheriting the Montserrat font from the body. Border we need to reset. Font size will be somewhere around M. 1m which is again um, and then background background color I might set to none just so it makes things a little bit easier in a sec when we uh, I don't think this is actually doing anything maybe we can remove this and do you actually want all um, I'm not sure about this but let's add borders to both of them probably not a good idea but we'll find out in a second so this is looking nice and inside the hero section is where I'm going to specify the rest of the styles. So they're going to be very specific for this section hero. And I, if you remember, we called the first button sign a button and the second button talk button. So what I can do is do a sign up button and for the sign up button, uh, if you remember on the design, we have white background with the purpley color background color will be one two three uh, excuse me color will be the purple color which was that 1c073e and for the talk to us button head and background color would be the purple color that we just added here And the text will be now the opposite. It will be color set to white. And for the sign up button, I'm just going to push the talk button from here just with a margin right uh, with 1M. So it gives us this nice space. As you can see, this hero content is quite white, which is not what we have on the design. So I'm going to have to shrink this box down a little bit. Hero content. And I can add this around here maybe. Hero content, we need to do maybe max width set to 370 pixels. I think this is looking okay actually. And let me now remove all this because we won't need the padding of the hero anymore. I was just pushing it so it's not under the menu. And what I can do is I'm actually just going to position the hero content. So this, this hero section is going to be full width all the time. And this hero content, this content here, will be positioned absolute. It will make things a lot easier, I think. So we have the max width, then we need to do something like top, I don't know, 30, let's say 30%. We can adjust it a little bit later. And obviously that needs to be positioned absolute. Okay, then left needs to be maybe around 10% as well, so we can see a little bit better. I think the line height, I'm not sure about the line height to this. Maybe we can add a bigger line height for the H1.
uh, 1.4 maybe. Okay, this looks okay -ish. I'm not too sure about it. Maybe we can adjust it later. Let's not worry about this so much. Actually, it looks a little bit weird. I quite like it to be the same as the design, but I don't want to waste too much time. So what I'm going to do is let's go back to this. Four maybe, open two. Okay, I quite like the 1.3 and maybe we can do the margin button to be 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Six. Okay, this is a little bit better, but it could do. This could do with a little bit more adjustment, just so we have exactly the same as the design. Let's now focus on the actual graphic and how we're going to do this. So, if I go back to Adobe XD, and originally, if you watched the first tutorial, I explained how I done this graphic. And basically, I just use Illustrator super quickly to create this graphic, and I didn't spend much time on it. But uh, that's why it's not looking the best. But it looks okay. The things that we need to focus now I'm not actually going to extract each vehicle individually and then the map what with SVG what we can do is extract group the whole thing extract it and then we can actually manipulate each object with JavaScript individually so how do we do this first of all we need to make sure that the cars are layered properly and if you open your assets panel excuse me if you open your layers panel on the left side here and you can also do this in Illustrator but I just happen to be in XD at the moment but it's it's exactly the same in Illustrator. And let me select this car. If I was to move this car underneath the building, which we will we'll animate it, we'll basically want to animate the red car to go from here to all the way here and just keep repeating or whatever. But as you can see, when the red car goes past the building, it's actually on top. So we need to make sure that this layer is actually under the building. And the way we can do this is I've actually named this layer red car. And you can do this by double clicking and just writing the name of your object. And of course, so select your object make sure that the easiest way to do this is with control and bracket or command and bracket on Mac and if I do control and bracket on Windows you will see how the layer is moving down and now the layer is underneath this group and that's why the car is going under it which is exactly what we want but of course we want to make sure that the car is also under this building as well so I'm gonna do exactly the same thing and just go down and I think this is okay. The car is passing all through all buildings realistically. I don't know if you're gonna be left-handed drive or right-handed drive, it doesn't really matter. Let's go with this. And now I need to do the same thing with the yellow car. I need to make sure that the yellow car is underneath this building. So control and right, sorry, left bracket to go down or command and left bracket if you're Mac. And here we go, we are under this building. So this car is absolutely fine between both building buildings now. And I'm just gonna, I don't know what's the easiest way, but I can just posi pos position both cars here because, or let's actually position them at their starting position because that might make it a little bit easier for us uh, with the coordinates. So I'll leave it there. Uh, that's actually okay I'll leave this one there and then we'll manipulate it later with code and now the blue car we need to make sure that the blue car is going underneath this building this building and this building first building let's go down that's good and it passes this building as well and that's absolutely fine so go okay, something somewhere there so it's on the canvas and I can select it and as I said it's quite important that we name the layers so as you can see I've got this one named blue car something like this this one is let's make them so they would the same this one is yellow car one will be red car I'm not gonna bother naming all the other layers because they don't matter as much and now that I'm done with this graphic I can go ahead select everything make sure I'm selected everything and I can just do Control and G to group everything or command and G if you're in a Mac to group everything alternatively right click and group let's hide the layers panel so we can focus on this. Now I can actually select this graphic, go to the menu on the left side here, and I can export. When I click export, hover it, then we can do selected because we've selected this object. And then the important bit here is to obviously select SVG as this is what we will be using. And we can leave it as embed. And also let's change the directory to be my right directory. And I'll just pay, uh, select the images folder and export. Now that our SVG file is exported, let's go and view it. So this is our SVG file and let's call it something like illustration or whatever. The name doesn't really matter at the moment. And if I was to open this 
in my browser you will see that we're getting the svg everything is looking nice and sharp and if i was to inspect this svg with the inspector you will see that we got we have this massive svg file with a lot of gradients groups and so on and we need to focus on the red car which is can actually spot at the moment so here we go here is the yellow car selected here yellow car so when we named the layers in adobe xd this actually gave uh, or groups ids which we can now use for the animation so we have the yellow car and we should have the red car here also the blue car which is what we want so this is perfect Walking, what we can actually do with svg what i'm gonna do here is i'm actually gonna copy the svg source and just insert it into html just like uh, i'll show you so let's open this file in any editor. So obviously I'm using Visual Studio Code and this gives us this massive SVG file. And what I'm going to do is actually, I'm just gonna go ahead copy and paste this in our illustration file, um, illustration div. And of course this is gonna make our div quite big now. But as I said, let's go, let's go up and find one of the cars so I can show you again what we're trying to achieve let's look for yellow here we go so we have the yellow car group here and this is what we'll be focusing on the id is what we'll be selecting to make the animation work so let's close this and i'm actually gonna go and collapse this illustration there because there's just too much going on and it's gonna it, it makes it look very messy so let me save this and i think i closed the browser which is not good so now that we've pasted the svg as you can see the svg is here on top just like an image the great thing about svg is obviously it's uh it never looks pixelated because it's a vector graphic it's quite small in size i believe and you can actually optimize it as well so 49 kilobytes which is pretty good and we can manipulate everything on this svg with a little bit of javascript and just to make sure i don't know if this thing this car is actually above the building so i'm gonna have to re quickly go down uh, let me check these cars as well this one is fine and this one is fine okay i'm gonna have to quickly resave this I could have moved it manually, um, but that's fine. So that's saved. Uh, I can go to the um, SVG again, copy the file, uh, the data. And paste the new data in here, okay? So hopefully this will be now, we go back to the browser, the car is now underneath which is quite important so the car moves down okay so as you can see we have a little bit of an issue here and the way to solve this is actually with svg we can if you go up svgs have this view box which it, which uh, we can manipulate and the way i found the perfect view uh, box for me is by inspecting the elements and i was actually just like messing with the numbers a little bit so i was moving those numbers up and down let me let me make a quick change just remove the decimals to make it easy so something like something like this uh, and as you can see it's already started to cut it and i've done the same thing for for the uh, left and right i've made sure that i spend my time and try to like calculate how much i need to cut the view box and just so we speed up time i've actually i actually know the numbers and the first numbers for me it's obviously for your project will be different but the first numbers are zero zero and then one four eight six and nine six six now you're probably realizing that this image is actually not scaling inside or box and the reason is that it's not yet uh it's not responsive yet and to do this we can actually fix this super easy by going to styles and we need to make sure that the svg position is absolute so it goes to the right and the width is always 100% so when we scale the browser down the actual uh, svg scales and the height needs to be set to auto just like you would do um, responsive images i guess so i'm going to use the illustrator let's see where we are hero i'm going to use the illustrator class and just do something like svg position can be absolute right can be zero width has to be set to 100 pixels so we're respon so it's responsive and the height we can set to auto 
again so it makes it responsive so so far as you can see things are looking good the next thing we can actually do is actually okay the other problem is that we have this overflow and we need to stop this and we can do on the illustration we can do overflow hidden height um, let's put the height to be set to 100 vh as well and let's have a look at this so this is okay i might actually have to do display this as flex and also and also do align items to be flex end okay this is a little hack I think this is positioning everything at the bottom now and we have the box cut quite nicely and of course we can make this smaller or bigger as you wish and if I scale down the browser now you will see that our image is actually quite responsive we can of course modify it to look the way we want and of course we can do a Z index on this to be one so if I was to inspect this super quickly um, the hero content I can just give it where was the problem uh, yeah you can see that we can do that in the next one and the content will go on top but let's leave or oh, i can fix this let's leave this for now maybe i can fix it in a bit remember when we started the tutorial i let me collapse this super quickly as well remember when we started the tutorial i included the gsap animation if you want to learn about gsap it might be best for you to go to the gsap document and just explore some of the eases on the timeline because it's their documentation is actually super good as you can see this is the use without timeline which i'm going to explain now and uh, this is the use with a timeline which basically makes it a lot easier to do sequential animation so let's start with the animation the first thing i want to animate on our website is the header which is our logo and the menu and the second thing i want to make sure i animate is this and i'm not going to animate the individual details i'm just going to animate the whole box for now uh, just because it's easier and i want to focus more on the cars so to do this in fact let's to do the settings index on the content super quickly that thing is to one okay so we can select it okay so there are two ways of doing the animation as i said you can do it as without the timeline which is super easy and with the timeline which is quite easy as well and i will show you both and i will show you the difference so without the timeline what you will do is as soon as you include your gsap what you can do is gsap dot from. the first thing that is taken is the actual property so let's say header then we can do so we're selecting the header and just to show you a super quick animation we can do a duration of 0 0.6 seconds and we can do it as ease power 2 out and the way you can actually find the different easings is if you go to their website you can actually go to uh, their documentation is and there are so many ease, uh, i think i'm actually using the power of two so i pretty much copied this bit and then if we go back so we have power of two out then we need to change the y coordinate and we can do something like minus 60 and make sure we close this so if i save this and refresh you will see that we're getting this super nice animation every time a refresh now we can literally do exactly the same for the hero content and if i was to copy this super quickly and target the hero content we can set the duration again the ease then for this let's make it a little bit more complicated and make it look nice so we might need to start from opacity zero zero um, then we can set y to be let's say minus 40 and we can set a delay of one so hopefully if this works this animation will start first and then after one second this will follow let's save and refresh one two one two and 
GZAP makes the animation so good um, and so easy to do. Uh, it's it's absolutely insane. Now I can obviously do this for I can obviously fade in the uh, image as well, which we which will be pretty good. And to do this, we can do exactly the same thing as the hero content. But let's do illustration. And in this case, what I want to do is delay one point seven so it shows after the hero and think i don't need the y because we don't want to actually move the svg so if we save this let's go back to a browser and let's have a look oh, the reason this didn't work is probably because i misspelled something let me copy this yes I'm, i misspelled illustration so let's save this and as you can see we get menu content and boom. So this is super useful, super easy to do. And the next method of actually doing this animation is with the timeline, as I said earlier. So with the timeline, basically, if I was to change one of them numbers, so one of them delay numbers, which means I have to go back, uh, go down and change the other numbers. And if we're building a very big animation, then changing the delay on every single animation will be will be painful. If you want to fix this, we can do a sequential animation with the timeline and which uh, GSAP makes super easy and it's pretty much exactly the same as this, but I just want to cover it super quickly. So we can do a uh, let or a const. So let TL as timeline gsap dot let's create the timeline and let's say we want to delay every single animation with one second it will make sense in a second so, so delay one and then we can say timeline dot from and then we can do exactly the same thing as we were doing here pretty much. I can actually copy this. And we get from header duration 1.6 seconds, is power of two out y is minus 60. And I can, let's save this and test it. As you can see, this works. Let's now do the other one, which is this. And I can actually copy the from as well. So TL dot from exactly the same code. And then I can do the last one as well. We might as well do it. TL dot from without the two dot. And look at this now. Actually, the only thing that I didn't do here is I forgot to remove the delay. Let's remove the delay. So you can see how it's actually working. So we don't need the delay on them anymore. Every single element will be sequentially triggered after one second delay. So let's save. One, two, three. So this is the beautiful thing about the timeline. And you can do so much. Just make sure you go to the documents and view the, uh, the things that you can do like repeat, delays, and th there is just so much. Uh, you can see here, uh, you can pause, po um, you can pause, play, reverse, recent, remove. There, there is just too much to cover. But let's continue now. And now it's the most exciting part, I think, of this tutorial, which is animating the cars. So I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna remove the last animation for now, just because I want to, do this super quickly and I don't want to wait three seconds every time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start animating this. And to animate, to animate this, I'm actually gonna use the first method which I've showed you here. Remember when I said that the SVG is based of, based, it has a lot of groups. You can see all groups have IDs and so on. And if you remember, I make sure that the red car has a, an ID of red car, blue car has an ID of blue car, and the, uh, the yellow car has an ID of yellow car. So basically, I will be targeting those uh, IDs. So let's copy this. And what I want to do is change the position of the red car to go up here. And I'm going to show you an easy way to do this without without doing any mathematics. Let's do this method, which is GSAP dot two this time from here to here in reverse i think anyways ignore this and let me show you so gsap two let's do red car 
and retka is actually an id so we need the hash and then what we can do is let's see if i can structure it a little bit better a little bit cleaner for you guys and so we can do duration of maybe something like eight seconds so the car is not speeding so it doesn't get any speeding tickets uh, we need to move the x and i've kind of i've already calculated this but i'm not sure if it's gonna work so i'm gonna show you how to make it work anyway let's say dx is whatever for now 20 that won't work but let's say the y is 20 as well that won't work as well and then we need to do an ease and we can do let's do none for now because it's just the car will be just driving at the same speed and let's say we want to repeat this animation we can do that as well let's say four and we can also repeat delay let's say two and let's say this uh we actually have a problem we need to do comma instead and let's save this and as you can see the car is moving to the coordinates of x20 and y20 so we need to make sure that no uh, let me stop this for a sec so we need to make sure that this car is going over here and the way to do this is if you select the car if you find the group which is called red car you can see the coordinates here and the way i was doing it so i was just moving like this and as you can see the car moved and then i kind of like figured out what the numbers are uh, obviously you have to i think you have to press enter every time you do it so it will go up so i basically figured out what the numbers are by just doing this move the translate manually until i was happy and i think the numbers that would work for this would be 1960439 let's save this and as you can see the car is driving which is awesome then the car goes off the screen and repeats now this is perfect so let's do the same thing for the blue car but I think I might have to move the blue car outside the box and let's see where the red car starts. In fact, I'm, I will need to move the red car out of the box as well. Let's find the red car first. And the red car coordinates can be around there. And I'm gonna remove the decimal places just to make things easier. And yeah, I think the car is now starting just outside the box which is perfect let's do the same for the blue car i've already done the co coordinates but i showed you how to do that anyway so let me change the coordinates of the blue car uh, i'm removing the decimal places it makes it look a lot harder and and for the yellow car i hope this works boom Boom, save. I'm gonna close this so it doesn't get in the way. Okay. What I have to do now is basically repeat this process exactly the same and just change the coordinates and maybe some of the other settings. So let's paste it twice. Then we have blue car and then we have yellow car it's for the blue car let's say we want the duration to be 16 because the truck is a little bit bigger and we don't want the car, the car driver to get a speeding ticket of course and the x would be six one two two ten none uh, repeat we can say five whatever you know uh, the delay let's say repeat delay we can do that um, we can remove those commas as well i think and for the yellow car let's say duration can be seven just so they're different uh but you get the point eight um eight eight four why it's going to be one 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 four uh let's say repeat four times delay one whatever save this and let's have a look so all the cars are moving nicely they should be uh repeating as well I think the blue car was actually stuck in there so i think i need to change the coordinates a little bit anyways you can figure out the numbers on your own it's just a little bit off and uh, the last thing i wanted to do is i wanted to 
add this animation back in so the whole page looks nice when it goes back so like this and this is everything from this tutorial i hope you've learned something another tutorial went for far too long again you can obviously skip thank you very much for watching i hope you learned something as always my name is Ruddy, and this is my channel Ruddy the brand i post weekly and i'm actually trying to do a lot more content oh, oh, nowadays oh, oh, oh. Uh, so please subscribe to my channel make sure you give this video the like subscribe and comment if you have any questions below and see you next time thank you for watching